Oh my goodness, Bob, we're going on tour. This is so exciting. Listen, y'all, tickets are available right this very second. Help us yes, sell this tour out. Help us go bananas. So the next time y'all see us, we'll be at Madison Square Garden, Henny. <laughs> Hello, let me tell you something. This is the biggest tour Bob and I are doing. It's going to be great. Lights, camera, action, dancers, podcast, everything you want in a Bob and Monet show, you're going to get. So make sure you get your tickets at bobandmonet.com. Oh, and this is going to be brand new music. Ooh. All right, bobandmonet.com. Why are you denim, the denim. Mario theme? Why, why, why are you doing this? What is this? Denim, denim, denim. Denim, denim, denim. Denim, denim, denim. Why are you singing this theme song? Uh, it was just in my head. Um, I remember, I have fond memories growing up with um, my brothers and my cousins playing in 64 and playing, which y'all know, uh, the Super Mario that came out for N64, that was like everything. It was like the best shit. And it, I have very they have that song on the 64 in Mario? Yeah. Oh. But it's probably in every Mario, to be honest. I mean, I vividly remember it from Super Nintendo, but not from N64. I th- I mean, the, the, it's part of the Mario multiverse of madness, girl. They they uh, and Nintendo owns the rights to the songs. So they probably put in. I'm sure they probably put in every Mario game. Probably. Yeah. Not probably. They do. Why do you have to probably mean? You can say they do. Because I don't know. I, I can't. I don't. I mean, but I'm they telling probably you. do. I'm telling you, honey. I mean, I don't think you know for sure either. I think you. I mean, it's probably it's probably a safe assumption. But you know for a fact that that song is in every iteration of the Mario game. Of Mario, like Mario, like super, like saving the world, like Galaxy, Paper Mario, N sixty four, the Mario Deluxe, those Mario's. Not, not. I don't know about tennis and golf and uh, darts and Mario fucking uh, ice climbers. I don't know about all those, but I know about that. Well, you know what's about to happen is now the the comments gonna be full of people just telling you how wrong you are. But like, actually, it wasn't in this version. It wasn't in this version. It wasn't in this version. Or comments telling me how right I am. That's also another possibility. I mean, did you play the original Mario? Like, of course. I mean, who? Yes, everyone. Has I don't know. Did you? I don't know. You, had a, you had a Super Nintendo. I did. I've had every. I've had every game system since I've been alive. What do you mean every you game a, system? Did you have? Did you have a Dreamcast? I did have a Dreamcast. Yeah. Did you really? I certainly did. I also had a Sega Saturn. Well, I, so don't talk about. Ge- so let's talk yes. about game. I, I've I literally had I had a Sega Saturn, which no one had. That's not true. We had we had a Sega Saturn. We had, not we, literally no one. Monet, Jesus Christ. We had we had everything growing up. Um, not bo- well, anyway, not, not bo- look not in the comments not, below. Not bo- so what I'm getting bo- at is I bo- do not bo- know bo- if that was in well. every iteration, but I'm sure some video game historian down below will let you know if you're right or if you're wrong. No, I don't no, have no. a particular stake in this uh, conversation. Monet is right. It's called the underground theme, and it's Thank pretty you. consistently used in every Mario game since the original 1985 Super Mario Bros. Victory. I'm going to reiterate, I never said you were wrong. I said, I don't so know. Sweet. I literally said, probably. This was, not, this was literally not an argument. I said, probably, because uh, I don't know. Victory tastes and smells. Victory so over sweet. who? Who who, are you have, who do you have a victory over? Uh, oh, listen, I'm, I'm having the victory with myself. I have the victory in Christ Jesus, and I have the victory over you in this situation. I'm, I feel very alive. I just don't know how you have a victory over me when I literally said probably. I literally just don't know. It's okay. You know what, Joe Bob? Check the comments out. They'll let you know. Honey. They'll let me know what? Oh, you'll see. <laughs> okay, I am I am not interested in doing a podcast with you today. All right, let's start this this fucking thing. You are really on one today in a very you combative mood thing. for you no reason. I'm combative. I might be combative. Because you, you are like starting a fight when no one's fighting. Wow, like, no what one's is fight, going though. on? No one's starting a fight, baby. I, you know, I have been trying to reach out to you for the last couple of days. Yeah, not her yeah, back. I, I guess I'm gonna have to screenshot and show oh. how how false oh. all that information I, is. I know you got a screenshot. I'll put it all right on the screen right now. I have I've called you three times in the past couple of days, Bob. And you You're know, both in the same city. Are you gonna try to see each other? I would love to see Bob the drag queen. I really would. I I really the last this, text this we may, have between you and I is text, from me. Not text call. 
And also the last well, the last text, text we have me, is for me. It's no, it's from me group texting you, Kennedy and Jacob about something because I called you three times about that thing and you never responded. And again, I get it. You were on, you were on location filming, and I get it. You're very busy. You know, it seems like you're coming into the podcast with some uh, up, like you're upset about something and you really <laughs> want to talk about it. To quote, to quote, Shea do I look upset to you? Do I look upset? Yeah, to honestly, you? yes, you do. I look upset. Sound, so this, this yeah, is the you, face of anger do. and upset. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Okay, I want to also let the people know, everyone who's watching. It sounds like your podcast. feelings are hurt about something and you want to talk about it. Um, well, um, to, I'm very excited to everyone looking who watch, who's watching the video right now. This is the last time y'all are going to see this old raggedy setup behind me. The container store is about to come here tomorrow and fucking step my pussy all the way up, honey. She's on another echelon. That's a botanic and a gagatron. But the, but the, 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 the million. I'm about to be on. So I'm very excited. I'm very, very, very excited. Today we're reviewing RuPaul's Drag Race episode eight from season eight. <laughs> Bob, are you excited for me? No, we're reviewing RuPaul's Drag Race episode eight, season eight, and at the top no, of the no, episode. No, 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 hold up, hold up, hold up. First well, of I'm all, not excited. You want me to talk about something I'm not excited about? I'm not Rupaul, particularly excited about you getting a new closet. Do you care that I'm getting a new closet? I mean, to some degree, maybe, maybe in some realm, oh, to some degree. She is now she, Sheena, Sheena Mood, honey. That is your name, Sheena Mood, Sheena Mood. You really got wild. You went from zero to negative sixty, real quick. <laughs> Get your shit together. We have to do a podcast, Mary. So pep it on up. Crack a smile, bitch. Pep it on the, the fuck Remember out. RuPaul's Drag Race episode yeah. 8, season 8. At the top of the episode, Thorgy has just uh, gone home. Uh, How did you feel about her mirror message? Well, like I said last week, you know, it was, um, Thorgy was obviously in her feelings about something or the other. Back. And um, I didn't take it personally. Um, whatever Thorgy was going through during, you know, Drag Race was her own personal uh, journey of her being uh, angry or upset or jealous or whatever she was. So she left a, a very shady message, which she acknowledged was shady in the message. Uh, but maybe, they, do you think that maybe there's like a little gesture trying to be, do like a little, a little shady, like fun and not like shady mean? Or did it come across mean to you? I don't think it was about it being necessarily mean or not mean, but I think that she knew that what she said was uh, was less than savory, and she said it anyway. So I think that she, I don't think that she was like this clueless, like, oh, what am I saying? I, I've never, like, I think that she said something shady and she knew it was shady. And did all the girls feel that way when y'all were reading it? Everyone was like, oh, well, or was everyone kick about it? I don't think anyone really cared. Like, kind of like how, how Kim said, Kim was like, well, it doesn't really matter because she's gone. Like, everyone was like, well, she was being kind of negative and now she's uh, gone. But also, when you're at Drag Race, you, you're too busy. You have you have too much to do to be worried to, to, to sit around Bitch, and ruminate. I'm busy. To ruminate on whether or not um, Thorgy um, wanted to, you know, stir up drama or something. I mean, I think she knew a shady and, and we were like, all right, girl. Anyway, moving on. We got shit to do. <laughs> Work. Especially when you're in the top five, you are, uh, you are like, it's just, it, get, it starts to get very busy. <clears throat> and you're also very, very tired and like just completely exhausted, you know? Do you feel tired and exhausted today? I feel a little tired and exhausted today. You look a little tired and exhausted. Um, so Naomi tells Derek. Your um, makeup is tired and exhausted. So Na- you're right. The makeup I'm wearing today is tired and exhausted. And then yeah. um, Naomi and Derek. So Der- Naomi does one of those things where she is very interested in, um, she likes to tell Derek when she thinks she should have been in the bottom. And she says it to her face all the time. She's always like, I thought Derek was going to be in the bottom. And she, I'm like, damn, this is, she's, it's, it's, it is a, it is a, a very common for, for Naomi to do this on the show at this point. It is. She's, it, it is. It is Naomi's calling card. <laughs> and I got to Specifically, for it. specifically also, Derek. knowing Naomi Smalls, I'm like, it, it's, it's even funnier to me because Naomi is such a sweet lady, but Naomi is also very opinionated. It's very funny to see her letting her opinions be known. Well, I just don't know why girls always want to tell other girls that they think they should have been in the bottom. Bitch, like, you did it the other episode. Yeah, I, I've, been, I've been through the drag race machine now. And yeah, who did I say, say you don't understand it? So you should think, why, why did you do it when you did it? Who did I say that to? A couple episodes ago, some, something about, uh, I think it was to Derek, maybe? 
and then, but you try to make a joke about it, and then Derek. No, 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 that's offended. not what happened. That's what not happened? what happened. What I, what I, what happened was, uh, they said that Derek Berry was like really uh, should go on tour, and then I said, oh, I want to. They, they, they might have been on drugs. That's not the same as being like, I don't know why you weren't in the bottom. I don't understand why girls feel the need to share. Like, I think you should have been in the bottom. I was shocked that you were not in the bottom. You don't, you don't, you don't understand why girls do that. Yeah, it's, it's it is a little bit shocking to me. When girls go, look at another girl and go, I'm just really shocked that you were not in the bottom. Mm, that is, it? It, just, it, it, it just seems like a, something that could only stir up drama. Yeah. Like, I don't know what other reaction that could have besides people arguing. I, mean, I think a lot of drag racers, like we, I've said it before, like it, it echoes like kind of what happens like in, 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 drag, in, in dressing rooms across America. And dra- girls say shady things sometimes to each other to sometimes solicit a reaction. And sometimes you get it, sometimes you don't. And so it's not I mean, shocking to me that girl, like girl, be, people. I've I, been, I've been backstage at Queen, and people saying something so to someone else. And I was like, "Ooh, not saying that to her." I think this, this is very, this is typical behavior for for queens backstage. I didn't say it's atypical. I said I find it surprising. For me, I would never do that. I just don't normally be like you did a bad. Like I don't normally tell people after a competition or something that I think they should have done worse than they actually did. That is, that is, uh, I would never do that. So I just, I'm always like, it's so interesting when people. Tell people that they think they should have been in the bottom. Word. I just, I just, I just don't think that's something I would do. I mean, unless someone asked me, someone asked me, or if I was, or if I'm specifically doing a thing where I'm like paid to give my opinion. So if, if it's a thing where I'm like meant to give my opinion about something, then yeah, I'll give my opinion. But I usually don't go around being like, "You should have been in the bottom." I, mean, also, I don't know. Maybe, maybe that's something you do. I don't do that. No, I mean it's also TV. I'm sure there's like a you know whatever. Who knows why people do shit? It's, it's, it's television. People do things a little differently than they would in real life, for sure. We've seen this time and time I, again on this damn show. Like Fifi on All Stars two, for like oh yeah, girl. When Alyssa popped up, like you that girl, I knew you were. She's like, Ugh. like we. Well, we the difference there is like. There was because like Alyssa was talking there. about how she felt about something, but this is Derek Bear being like, "You should have been at the bottom," and I'm shocked that you weren't there. That is just gonna breed confrontation, um, especially when you when you look someone in their face and say it. Now we often we all go so like after a show, I think it's pretty standard to like after a pageant or a competition or a show to discuss uh, with people like how things went down. Um, I'm also intrigued by the fact that Derek, that Naomi is interested. Is like Naomi is really harping on Derek Barry not blocking her brows. Or, or or covering her brows, especially because right. because Naomi doesn't cover her brows. Also, but it's also for me in my, in this case, I'm like, bitch, I would, I'm like, like it's kind of with Thorgy being so obsessed with Chi Chi not doing whatever. I'm like, bitch, why? Like, if she's doing bad, that's good for you. Like, it's gonna propel you forward. Same thing with Naomi and Derek. I'm like, if Derek is not doing this thing with her brows. Like, it's only gonna make her look bad. So I, I, would, I would like, bitch, keep on not doing it. I think I, I love it. I don't even think not covering her brow makes her look bad. I think it's I think it's that they all like focus on this one specific thing about her makeup, and they decided to they landed on the brows, and it's so it's weird because Na- because Naomi never covers her brows. Like that, yeah. that's what made it so wild to me. But Naomi, so I, but Naomi had good brows though. Derek did not. So it's something that you look at Derek's face and you're like, that's really off. Well, I mean, good brows is subjective. It's subjective, but sure, I think it's drag. everything's subjective. But I think is I think there are ways to change your makeup without specifically focusing on the brow, especially for someone who's never done it before. That is uh, pretty hard to do. Oh, so, that's great though, because then, bitch, they're gonna, as we will see, try it and fuck it up. Yeah, I guess so. Um, strategy. And then we do the puppet show. I I don't I don't think Naomi was doing strategy. I think Naomi was literally wanting to cover her brows and create a new mug. Um, and then we do the puppet show. I, I I love the puppet show. The puppet show is basically just a reading challenge through impersonation. Yeah, and, and we were all confused when they, they pulled out my puppet. So I don't know why my puppet had hair. I was like, I don't know how, what form of me this puppet is. They probably from your casting the, that those the ones that you said with you with hair, the your dreads. I mean, they those have from dreads. like seasons ago. In in the in the video I sent them for this one, I did not have any hair. And the, I mean, it'd be weird if they decided to if they randomly instead of taking footage of me in the workroom where I didn't have hair, went back to my season, you know, four audition tape, and made a puppet from that. Was it 2016? When did you didn't you shave your hair like the year before this? No, I I shaved my head the, the entire time I was at Drag Race. I didn't have any hair. God. Um, and and most of us are are made from like they they reference us from us being in the room. I don't think they they pull up old audition tapes to make our puppets. 
No, I mean, but we, we say oftentimes Rue is like, we'll say something like, I've been watching you girls for years. And I remember, but, 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 I mean, again, I don't know how much you actually re- be remembering from our previous audition tapes, but, but, you know, maybe, maybe, maybe you with hair really, really struck a chord with RuPaul and he just really liked that Bob the Drag Queen. You're right. Maybe there's a chance that RuPaul was just watching an old video of me with hair and then went over to the people who make the puppets and said, please, faction like, Bob's We want some hair on this of, nigga. Off of uh, Bob's season seven uh, makeup thing um what i'm really interested in is during this um puppet reading challenge like i feel like me derek chi chi and kim are all like doing some like silly stuff and naomi and derek are just calling out the things they don't like about each other in the middle of a puppet show with very few punchlines involved at all (laughs) i love it i love i love savage naomi savage naomi is my favorite She'd be cutting deep. Well, when well when they when when she was like, I need to have the smallest lashes, and then Derek Barry goes, I wear three on ones, cunt. That's one of my favorite lines from the episode. I'm like, I'm looking at Derek. I'm like, does she wear three on ones? Girl, no I mean, way. She must say she must take your and cut the ends off. So really be like a fucking two on one, which I was guilty of doing back in the day. I wear tiny lashes now, though. A lot of tiny. Um yeah, whatever. I also love when Kim says, "Let's talk about your two inch heels." I really think that's just a funny line. Let's talk about let's talk about two inch heels. Is a very funny line, and um, also just so you guys know. So we we do the the the, the whole thing. Uh, Chi Chi wins, which I agree. Chi Chi did a very good job in her um, puppet show. Chi Chi was very funny. I Chi Chi was really um, especially meeting her at the season at the at the at the Voss events uh, stage forty eight show. Like what? You know, before the season was announced, like watching, I was like, she's not gonna be funny. And then me and who was it? Who was I with? Myself, Chi Chi, and someone else. It wasn't Patty. Anyway, we were all like sitting there, kicking and talking. I was like, this bitch is really funny. And like watching the season, seeing stuff like this was, and seeing some of her commentary, I was like, mm-hmm. wow, she's. She, I think Chi Chi was a very funny gal. No, Chi Chi, yeah, Chi Chi is. Chi Chi was very, very, very funny. We were sitting at the thing upstairs, and she, all y'all, were going downstairs to do whatever. And then I was like one of the last people upstairs, and I and I looked up. I was like, "Hey, girl, you not going downstairs?" And she's like, "Girl, I ain't even took it." And I don't think she ever ended up taking the night. It was great. She probably wore a flouncy dress, so she didn't <laughs> she didn't have to. I remember that moment. And um, just yeah. So we get our challenge. We have to do it's a, it's a ball. It's the book ball. We have to do a, a baby drag look. Um, a a look where where we represent our moms, and then a look made out of books. And when we first got the prompt. Baby drag was first time in drag. It was not drag queen, drag as a baby. It was first time in drag. So all of us had these first time in drag looks that we prepared um, that never got to see the light of day. And all of yours? us, say again? What was yours? Mine was, I mean, I, I think I, I, I vaguely remember having like a leotard and wearing control top pantyhose instead of like capizios or dance tights. And I had L and R written on my hip pads so you could see them through, you could see my pads through the tights. And I, I can't remember some other stuff. It was just like a bunch of stuff like representing us like first time out in drag. Um, so all of our baby drag looks, we actually had to make there. They did not air this, but all of our baby drag oh, looks we made there along with our book looks because they changed our baby drag looks at the last time well, at the last minute i mean well we'll talk to we'll ask some questions about them things um when we get to the baby drag alert um and then this is when derek and uh so i feel like derek naomi started reading derek as like a joke and then it starts getting too real in this thing and this is when Naomi says, I have thick skin, one of my other favorite lines from the show. And then Derek goes, and it looks like it. And then Naomi <laughs> says, and Derek has thin hair. And that is one of my, that is a moment I think about all the time. And, and after she said that, I think it really struck a chord with Derek. Because Derek, for a long time, could be like, I'm getting the hair, sir. I'm going to get that. The moment I get, the moment I oh, save Derek. up the money and, and, and get um, a break from um, work, I'm getting the hair surgery. She said this on um, camera? Uh, I, I mean, she probably said while cameras were rolling, but I don't I don't remember if it aired or not. But it's something I heard Derek say Did quite Derek a few times. Did Derek ever get hair surgery? I do not know. Work. But she was pretty open about it with us, though. Got it. And Derek has thin hair. And I, I of it. course, screamed. I also screamed. love Kim Chi just kind of instigating, too, with all of her. I mean, they are not instigating with y'all reactions because they are funny. But when when, he, when a group of girls are reading each other and everybody's like, it was like, 
jumping on the back of someone's read and like, ah, it really makes the other person be like, and you, which is, you know. Well, I feel like Kim was usually trying to, I mean, I, like guys, I can was we do, doing, can we, can we, can we love each other? Yeah, the, me, me and Chi Chi were doing that, but Kim was usually trying to defuse it, actually. Like, I don't think Kim was actually, like, trying to, Kim was usually, like, if the girls were arguing, Kim would say stuff like, when's dinner? Or she'd be like, let's just hug. Or she'd be like, come on, guys. Which so, is I don't so think, crazy. I don't that Kim, is not the I Kim, Kim I know. Kim, Kim I don't think is, Kim was instigating. Kim was, like, the only one not instigating. I would say, it was just not the Kim I know. The Kim I know today would be all of it and be like, get, really egging it on. Well, work the world has changed. Or you work the world a couple of times, and you become a whole different person. You know, Kimberly Chai. Um, and they're really going in on the on the mama business here. They are really going in on the mom talk here. Also, the video, that, the picture they show of Chi Chi's mom. That's not her mom. Yeah, I heard this story. That's her drag mom. Right. And Chi Chi was like, "Good, that ain't my mom." And they never. I think they. I think they fixed it on some versions, but not on others. I can't remember. But that is that is not Chi Chi's. Um, so biological crazy. mother that is Chi Chi's that's not the woman who raised Chi Chi that's the drag queen who raised Chi Chi so through, through the drag scene damn well somebody don't got got famous for being Chi Chi's mama um I was like work I, I think I think that Chi Chi's drag mom had passed away before this I can't remember I can't remember it, it, it was there's a obviously there's a lot going on um and we found out that Naomi has 11 siblings which is which is so wild. It's very. It's giving cheaper by the dozen. I, have you ever run into one of Naomi's siblings? Uh, yes, I met two or three of them or half. No, have you ever like just randomly one it, run into one? Because I have run into like two of them. No, not randomly. No. Well, if I did, I didn't they're, know. They're a fucking gang. I mean, they are everywhere. They walked into me and be like, "Hey," <laughs> I was like, "Are you Bob the drag queen?" I was like, "Yes." And this guy was like, "I'm Davis's brother." Bitch, I didn't say that. He was like, "I'm Where Davis's was brother." It was a, it was at an airport, some airport. This guy was just like, "I'm, I'm, Na I'm Davis's brother." Davis Heppensall is is my brother. You, you run drag race together, and I was like, "Oh, you know, I'm, I'm I reckon if there's eleven of y'all, I'm gonna run, I'm gonna end, end up running into one of y'all sooner or later at an airport or somewhere." Davis, I love Davis Heppensall, and I met a few of them through Naomi as well. I actually want to go to Redlands and visit June, see June in Redlands. Have you seen his nieces' TikToks? Oh yeah, Damn. I've seen the other yeah, nieces. The nieces make TikToks. Have you seen these? No, Jacob, send me so, one in the chat. There was a TikTok trend a while back that was like, um, "Who who is the famous person in your family?" And then they'd be like, "Well, my uncle is Naomi Smalls. Naomi Smalls is my uncle." And it's like, and she like got big on TikTok for a while, being like, "My uncle's Naomi Smalls." <laughs> like, God, yeah. here's a picture of me and my uncle growing up, and this is us again, and this is us again. And like he was like, yeah, girl, my niece is really popping off on TikTok. <laughs> I live. Which Mary is, post, she posted a it's a reel the other day. She looks so beautiful. Oh, love her. My nieces and nephew, my niece and nephew have one in one. Uh, do not post. Uh, well, my niece is on TikTok, but her TikTok is also private because she's very young. And uh, Naomi's niece is a lot older than my niece. I think she's like eighteen now. Work. And my niece is twelve, so yeah, she's not gonna have a TikTok that people can go see. Do your family? Do you have any fam, uh, family that posts like, "Oh, Nam, my cousin, my cousin's Monet," or my? No, I don't. I have my niece Leah. I have my niece, my cousin Leah, who's like eighteen now, but she doesn't post anything like that. She does not. They do not. They do not. Uh, they do not. Uh, 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 boost me on the social media, Leah you Hearns. A, you think she's ashamed? Probably. Probably. I mean, I would Probably. be. Um, I posted about you though, despite everything. Um, so there also is this is the moment where we all, where uh, where we all are talking about um, we're like talking about makeup. The, the the conversation of makeup comes up, and this is when Derek and Naomi get into a massive fight that goes on. I'm telling you all, way longer than you think it goes on. It went on. This was going on forever, and it's again it started out really lighthearted, but then it got really wild, and then it turned on me somehow, and I was like, what? How did I get involved in this? And then suddenly, Kim Chi just will not stop coming for me. And I was like, "Bitch, leave me alone!" Like I wasn't even trying to fight. I was just like, "What? Why are y'all making fun of my looks so much on this day?" Did anyone say anything to you about you before your makeup before this? Like in the room, like jokingly, or try to shade you about your makeup? Um, 
I mean, maybe I can't really remember. It was so long ago, but I remember this was the day where I was like, "You guys are being." I was. I remember being like, "If this feels like I'm being bullied," like I was just sitting there trying to like make my fucking dress, and she kept being like, "Kimchi kept being like." Yeah, it just looks like you're just like not wearing any makeup. And then Derek Bray was like, yeah, I just feel like you just don't have beauty. Like the beauty that RuPaul has and all the winners have, you you just don't possess that level of beauty and elegance. And then and then Kim Chi kept like, yeah, it just looks like you're literally, it literally, literally, literally looks like you're not wearing any makeup on your face at all. And I kept being like, this is wild. Why? And I was very hurt and irritated at that point. Why didn't you say that? Why didn't you get at him for that? Well, I I wasn't interested in fighting. I was just hurt and irritated. I didn't I didn't say I I was like wanting to like hit them. I just kept being like, why are they making fun of me? When I say get at them, I'm just like express your feelings. But I'm like, can y'all stop? This is like really rude. I think I did express myself as well as I could in the moment. Or I I would the best way that I could articulate myself while also trying to complete my task, and um, you know, manage all that at the same time. I think I did. I think I expressed myself as best as I could. Work. Well, you know, you did the best you could with what you had. But I can but, I, I see how watching it back could feel it could be upsetting. Are you are you are you are you relieving that trauma? I mean, I wouldn't. It goes. I mean, I guess anything could be called trauma. But what I was, I was when I was watching, I was like, oh, I'm irritated again. Especially because Naomi basically pointed out how I felt, which was like Naomi said, "This bitch just called you ugly," and I was like, "I know. This is wild. Like, I'm just sitting here trying to fucking glue my." fucking corrugated cardboard to my um piece i was very emotional and upset this episode this whole episode this untucked is also a mess maybe that's why you couldn't embrace the material uh, this was this was the embrace the material episode when i was like uh i was very irritated this episode kim she was really harassing me <laughs> quite frankly this episode Kimberly chai tea latte getting the girls really getting the girls heads that's probably why she won her she had everybody uh downtrodden and feeling sad i was like stop confused. harassing me bitch god damn <laughs> let me fucking make my fucking outfits um and after uh derek and naomi have their massive blowout um the next day um naomi comes in and apologizes to derek and says that june her mother would not have been proud of her um and she offers to help her but this is hilarious because this is the blind leading the blind because she's like i'll help you cover your brows brows. and then she was like so how do you do it and Naomi goes oh I've never covered my brows which was really the icing on the cake of this whole episode of being like you've got to do this and then she was like oh I've I've literally never done this not even once in my life yeah that is wild I would have been like I think Naomi the the apology was enough because like you trying to help this bitch and you don't know what you're doing you're probably going to make it worse for her like neither it's so awkward because neither one of them knows how to do it, but they're both trying to do something that neither one. Of them, so honestly, Derek should just shave his eyebrows off. It's Drag Race. Sh- they they'll grow back. Shave them off, girl. Did you shave your eyebrows off, gonna, gra- Drag Race? I shaved Patty's off, and mine. Yeah, I didn't have eyebrows for season for season ten. Oh, so I was. Did born. you have them for All Star Seven? Yeah, well, I had what I have now. Um, but anyone who is gonna audition for the RuPaul's Drag Race and you do not know how to cover your eyebrows, shave them bitches off and do it like a month before so you can do it a few times before you get there so you get the hang of it, like painting without eyebrows. But just shave them off. Don't go, don't, don't go on TV with lumpy oatmeal eyebrows. But shave them bitches off. They grow back. Trust me, I've done it you many also, times. You can also learn how to cover. Like learn to cover your brows is really not hard. It's, it's not hard, just, but there's a learning curve. And then everyone who who's just starts to learn how to cover their brows go, goes to the oatmeal phase. It lasts for about three months. I didn't go, go to the oatmeal phase. phase. So, search for pictures. Search. Do do all your searching. Search from here until the end of the earth. I never had oatmeal brows. Did okay, you ever well, have Bob. My brow phase. <laughs> do what? You you don't have eyebrows really. I have very faint brows, but I never had an oatmeal face. Bob has maybe like a strand of hair in his eyebrows, so of course he. Maybe but you were just the same way that I went through an oatmeal face. Which one is it? Do I have no eyebrows? Or did I go through oatmeal? Which one was it? Bob didn't go through an oatmeal face, y'all. So you know, but you, if you have a, a hair, but which eyebrow, one? But you just see which hair. one was it? Was it oatmeal or no brows? Which one if was you, it? I'm gonna get to you in one second. If you have a lot of hair, the oatmeal phase is inevitable. Whether you use Prozade, I use all of them. Prozade, glue, whatever. You're gonna go through it. It's gonna happen. But if you want to be on HD, fuck motherfucking cameras in front of RuPaul, bitch, shave them bitches off and just figure it out when after the show is done. It will be great. I didn't shave my brows on Drag Race, and I think I did pretty good. Well, you ah. know, let's ask. Let's let's ask Kim Chi. Bitch, let's ask my crown notes. and scepter. Who did she well? She has some notes. Kim Chi has some Honey. notes on that ass. 
Well, you know what? RuPaul has some notes for me too. And I really appreciated the notes that RuPaul gave me. Actually, I have that one friend. <laughs> we all have that one friend who, when you ask how they're doing, they always say, oh, girl, I'm fine. It's kind of the same with my kitty, you know? She can seem okay. And since I don't speak cat, wow, wow, wow. You know, I just go with it. But now with Pretty Litter, I don't have to because Pretty Litter tells me everything I need to know because it's the world's smartest cat litter. Pretty Litter crystals change color to detect early signs of potential illnesses like metabolic acidosis, which can cause diabetes, urinary tract infections, kidney issues, and so many more, darling. Pretty Litter tells you everything you need to know about your cat. I wish Pretty Litter would tell me uh, why she has a, a attitude problem. Now, Pretty Litter is ultra absorbent and instantly traps odor. It's lightweight, dust free, and works for up to a month without clumping. That means no more wasting litter. We are putting too much waste out here in the world, y'all. M minimize your carbon footprint. Plus, Pretty Litter ships free to your door in a small, lightweight bag, and it never runs out. We do Pretty Litter, and people think, oh, they just stand this because it's an ad for the podcast. I have used Pretty Litter from day one since I've had Colleen and I still use to this day Colleen is three going on four years old and it works bitch it works it works it works it works one time it was like a little blue I, got to, I took it to the vet the vet checked her out and things ended up being okay but if I didn't have the pretty little to tell me that something was going on I would never bring it to the vet, to the vet and it could have gotten worse so pretty little really 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 does change colors and it really tells you what's going on with your cat I love it once you try Pretty Litter, it'll be the only litter you'll ever use. Go to prettylitter.com slash rivalry to save 20% off on your first order. That's prettylitter.com slash rivalry to save 20% on your first order. Prettylitter.com slash rivalry. Oh, girl. Okay, let me tell you something. Masterclass? Bob, Masterclass is a game changer. Have you watched the RuPaul Masterclass, Bob? I have not watched it yet. Tell me about it, please. Oh, RuPaul is giving you the secrets to her success, girl. But RuPaul, is, she talks from the real rip. She has Raven on there, and she is, she's including the people who use RuPaul. Um, um, oh, well, not how she got there, because she got there all on, on her own, honey. But the people who help her maintain her RuPaulisms and her rupaul nest, and it's fierce. You learn so much about, about mother. Do you call it mother like You want to make more money? You want to make more money? Wear a suit. You want to make more money? <laughs> Wear a suit. Well, listen, I'm a very, very busy woman, and I'm always working on different projects. One of my favorite things to do is to make music. And y'all have heard my newest song, Love Like This. Ow. Um, and I'm just getting started. That's just a little taste. I'm always interested in to know how artists compose, produce their own songs. And I've gotten really into Masterclass for learning about how different artists make their music. Alicia Keys has a class. Do you like Alicia? I know she. Love you, you did one gig with her, and you swear she's your friend. Oh, my God. I just drooled. Yeah, oh, oh, loop it. <laughs> loop it. <laughs> Alicia Keys cast was fierce, and I absolutely loved it, darling. Like, it was super fun and informative, and I was blown away by the depth of knowledge and the quality of the experience. I highly recommend that all y'all check it out. Get unlimited access to every masterclass, and as a sibling rivalry listener, you get 15% off on an annual membership. Go to masterclass.com slash rivalry. That's masterclass.com slash rivalry for 15% off masterclass. Um, we also had to do a Jerry Blank um, inspired performance from Strangers with Candy. Um, are you at all familiar with Strangers with Candy? I'm not. I know it's a very big show. I know Amy Sedaris from, um, she has a new show. I don't know if it still goes on. Um, at, at Home with, with Amy, Amy Sedaris. Sedaris, which is very funny. Um, I didn't know she was married, which is great. Good for her. What's his name? David Sedaris, David Sedaris, and Amy Sedaris. They're very Monet, cute. Monet, what are you talking? What the fuck are you talking about? What? Monet, did you watch the episode, Tamar? Yes. That's her brother, Monet. Did it say it that is her brother? brother, David Sedaris, Amy Sedaris' brother? Oh, well, I didn't know. She, I didn't know she had a brother either. I don't know she's married or had a brother. But <laughs> you are. News to me. Does she have a sister too? Now, next, next you're going to tell me she has parents. No way. But also, why do you think she's married? I mean, she might be married. I don't know if she is or not. Yeah, Amos, I don't think she's married. No, she is married. She married a guy named Paul Danello. Paul Danello. Uh, but they, they actually got divorced, but um, she was oh, married. Not you making oh, yeah, Amy, Amy re relieve her, 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 her marriage drama. But also, I mean, it's not. It wouldn't be shocking that Amy Sedaris is married. I mean, she's a she's like a a, a woman of a certain age. You know what I mean? Lovely. She's very funny. 
you know, I, have, uh, I don't think you know anything about Ava Sedaris. <laughs> The, so you don't think she's funny? I said I don't think you know anything about Ava Sedaris. But I said she's funny. You said you don't know anything about her. You didn't anything. She's not. Funny. That was that was a non sequitur. That was a complete oh, okay, non sequitur. Okay, okay, it was, okay, it was okay, basically okay, you being okay. like, I don't know, if she's married to David Sedaris. No, David Sedaris. Is, also, David Sedaris is gay. Uh, to to really uh, uh, couple the fact that they're definitely not married. There's a picture of him and RuPaul on the runway, and every time I see RuPaul next to a normal sized person, it just always gags me. RuPaul is just a fucking gargantuan. RuPaul, like, there's a picture of Ru- which we'll put on the thing. RuPaul next to everyone. <laughs> Michelle Ross. Wow, Ross is pretty tall, huh? Okay. Maybe this is why they started doing those composite images where they would make them all the same height. Because RuPaul is just a gargantuan. Well, that might have been a quarantine thing, actually. Damn, he is huge. I fucking love it. But anyway, um, so so Amy, so our guest judges are David Sedaris and her and his wife Amy Sedaris, um, and we do I a tribute. Married. I, I told you, you got me. And um, y'all don't want to listen to me. The only reason I um, the only reason I did not watch um, well actually the only reason I knew about Stranger with Candy was because my old roommate used to be upset. I mean, obsessed with Stranger with Candy. So I just happened to be living with someone for five years who would talk about Stranger with Candy and Jerry Blank at least once a day. At least once a day, and um, when we do our little performances, I, Kim's makeup does not work with this Jerry Blank. I remember watching it, being like, I remember looking at her, being like, "This is like, like she looks deformed almost." The way that the way that uh, her makeup worked with the Jerry Blank drag. I think. I mean. That stuff doesn't bother me because watching Drag Race, you always have a queen that has that like, crazy makeup. Like, even when they would try to like soften it up, it kind of always looks like their 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 signature. So it's I mean, it's not like crazy to me. You know what I mean? To me, it looked. Well, there was one shot of her, and I was like, "Oh my god, this looks so bad." But I think this might be because it's really often for the top five slash top four to have this like performance, like the bitch, the like the, the where they're all dogs. They did that performance where they're all dogs. That one the time they used ball. to do this a lot. Um, and they had to do like a little thing. This was probably one of the oddest ones. Like the the Jerry Blank performance has got to be a fever dream of a top five performance. This is the weirdest one of all, in my opinion. Yeah, I thought. I mean, I'm not super familiar with not super. I'm not familiar with strangers with, with strangers with candy at all. But I thought it was great. It was it was it was whatever. It was a funny show. A little bit problematic, but a lot of things from the uh, '90s uh, or early 2000s. I think it's nineties to early two thousand. Strangers with Candy didn't always age particularly well. <laughs> Jerry Blank, Jerry Blank, Jerry Blank. Um, but Amy Sedaris is very, very funny, and I really enjoy her um mm-hmm. her content. And she, as, as a judge, she really was not taking it very seriously. <laughs> I love <laughs> like it. she I would just that. say, real. I mean, she would say some really wild and crazy stuff and we were like all right girl so you want to talk about these you want to talk about these looks say again first yeah we'll get into the looks first up rupaul this is i'm a very pretty dress it's a bodycon gown moment i mean this is a rupaul silhouette rupaul owns the silhouette it's 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 a tank dress yeah, and it always was good on that sexy body. I wonder, I did always just remember that RuPaul pads like all the way down to his like ca- um, calves, and I would love to know if that's true. We should ask Raven. I know. Um, kimchi. So kimchi starts with her. Okay, so did they give y'all this the the accessories? Because y'all all have the same shoes. Yeah, we all have the same shoes and necklaces, and so the large stuff was given to us. So I remember when we first did the show, when when, we, when I first watched this at like a viewing party, um, Kim Chi came out, and everyone was like, "You better like." They were like so gagged that Kim Chi made these big shoes. They were like, "Oh my god, I cannot believe Kim made these massive shoes." And then Naomi came out, and they were like, "Oh," and then I came out, and they were like, "Oh," and then Chi came out, and they were like, "Oh." <sighs> then people were like, "Did you all just borrow Kim's shoes?" And I was like, "No, they they gave us all. I think we all. I think there. I think there actually was one pair of shoes that we all wore that we all just kept like kind of bouncing back and forth between. <laughs> um, maybe two pair of shoes, but um, yeah, the large accessories they gave to us because again, I told you that they they switched it to the last minute to be this a baby doing drag versus first time in drag. Yeah. And then, I mean, Kim just made herself like a big square. It looks like like a big pillowcase with some with some holes for sleeves. So Kim and 
Derek, but so when we were making these outfits, I was like, guys, remember, we're supposed to look like babies. And they were like, huh? So, so Kim also was making this bodycon gown. And I said, Kim, I don't think that's what they want us to do. I remember saying to Kim and Derek, I said, Kim and Derek, I don't think this is um the assignment. We're supposed to look like babies. And I don't think what you're making is baby-like at all. And she was like, well, I wanted to be Ariel. And I was like, well, I, even if a kid was wearing an Ariel costume, it wouldn't be, I mean, we'll get to Derek in a second. It wouldn't be bodycon. And Ariel. And then Kim. And then Kim, I'll tell you, we'll, we'll get to Derek in a second. And then Kim was like, oh, okay. And then Kim scrapped what she made because then she looked over what I was making, which was a massive shirt. And then she's changed her idea to make an oversized garment as well. Got it. Um, and Kim's uh, doing like a like the like the life of a um, of a plant, a pl- which I think it's fucking brilliant. It, the story is so beautiful, and how she starts in the in the baby one with like. The little, the little uh, uh, sprout. Uh, sprout coming off of her head. It is she, not in order, though. It, it, it may not be in order, but it, the story still makes sense. And we, we, we see this and we know exactly what it is. Just, just looking at it without someone telling me what it is, I'm like, oh, I get it. And I think it's so well done, especially the second one of um, to her mom. It is so beautiful and it's so classic. And then what she made with the papers, with, with, with the fucking pages in the book, and she made that hip... Kim fucking shut it down. Shut it down. Kim used to take origami. Kim was like uh, studied origami when she was in like high school or something. And she told us when she got there, she's like, yeah, I studied origami. So she's really, really good with paper. My my only thought process is like, my only thing that I don't like is is that it's out of order because it's like a sprout and then like this dry dandelion and then a flower. But that, but I think if you don't look at it as in it going in order, you can see it as just like three different stories of a plant. Yeah, because especially since the one is her mom in the middle, it makes sense that that that's that would obviously be the oldest of the three. Um, that that would be the dandelion, which is like whatever, and then the the one that she made would be in the middle technically. But you know, she she can't control how the fucking the runways, how they made y'all do it. So I think it's fucking great. Kim fucking tore she she tore it up. Yeah, and um, Naomi Smalls, I love her baby look. I think it looks really good. She's also wearing a RuPaul shirt. Is she? Which I love. Oh. Yep. Oh, work. Yeah. She's wearing a vintage. Is like it's like a vintage RuPaul shirt. I wonder if she still has it. I mean, she cut it up for this challenge. Um. Yeah. Naomi looks great. I think her baby look is dope. And having um the big pat. Did they give y'all a wall big pacifier too, or she brought that with her? No. That all the all the big accessories they gave us. Got it. How come no one else uses yeah. a pacifier? I guess it only makes sense for her story. I guess. Uh, yeah, because we weren't babies. Yeah, and I her doing her ode to her mom with the with the babies. I think that's really pretty. That's very pretty. Also, her dress that she wore in her mom picture looked like it actually looked like the one. That's that's what, another problem that I kind of had with Kim was that Kim's uh, mom tribute didn't look like the picture of her mom at all, or Kim didn't have a picture of her mom in that garment. Um, and it feels like everyone else really, really well. Chi Chi did get close. Chi Chi's actually wearing. We'll, we'll get to Chi. I don't want to jump the gun. But I do love that Naomi, and I also think that Naomi's dress is the best one. I genuinely think that Naomi should have won this challenge. This is a, I think all three of her looks are really good. She did Baby Dragon away that no one else did it. Um, she's also the youngest one there, which makes sense for her to be the, the actual baby. Um, I love Naomi's look so much. Yeah, I love I love what Naomi made. The, her, her fucking, and the next season, RuPaul wear, end up, ends up wearing something similar for the season nine promo. But uh, Naomi, everything about Naomi's is so great. How she did that with the paper, which I would not know how to do that, and, and tying it all the way into the shoes. Naomi, I could have seen either her or Kim winning. They were both so good. I mean, they both were great. But Naomi's, uh, I mean, I, even though Kim's doesn't look like her mom, the whole story, the whole thing just looks, it looks really good. And sometimes mm-hmm. that's all you need. I th- and Moving on to me, um, I... I had this shirt for a this shirt that I made for a long. It's literally I just made a massive T-shirt. Where is and it? put and put my hair. I think I ended up selling it for charity. And I put my hair in a side ponytail. And it's this cute. picture, this picture of me leaning forward. When I tell you this is a literal, verbatim recreation of a picture that my mom posted on the internet, and I look exactly like her. And I'm telling, I'm about to find, I'm about to find the picture right now. We can, I'm gonna try to get Jacob to post it or whoever. I mean, get this edited into the thing. But this is literally a picture of my mom. Like I look just like my mother. 
Yeah, I mean, I think that you you probably the one who 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 well, you and Naomi, you guys like both like did exactly what you're. I can't really tell see me that. that's not this picture. Oh yeah, for sure. That middle picture is literally. And I was I was this is exactly what I was thinking about on this day, like down to like the. I'm gonna send this picture to you, Jacob, so you can get it put into the thing. Um, yes, yeah, so I think I'm putting you, it in the group chat so we can um all have access to it. You and uh, you and you and Naomi like definitely like recreated your moms exactly, and I think that that it should be commended for sure. And your baby one was cute. The one, even though you didn't em- embrace the materials, um, I think I think it's a good look. But I could see how like they could say you did not embrace the materials. And we and we, we we've talked about this before. Yeah, I I so the the bottom half of my get gown which I ended up not using was all pages, but I got rid of it because it was hard to walk in. And also, I don't even know how to explain this, but like the pages aren't perfectly glued down, so when you pick them up, they just kind of like everything kind of shifts. So I have to go back and spray paint again, so I could never fully spray paint the whole thing within the time that I had. I would have had to spray paint each page and then put them on. Um, so I ended up cutting it, but I still, but my entire brassiere was made out of book covers and my, um, the middle part of my, my corset was, and then around toward the, toward the bottom. Book covers? Back, like, like when you have like a hardcover book and they put like, like a that. hard, they were all made of like hardcover. So I, I took this like, uh, what do you call it? A cardboard cutter. And it was, by the way, book covers are very hard to cut up by the way. I would imagine. So I'm like cutting them open. My hands are getting so tired and I was like. Honestly, I'm just gonna put the the other parts in cardboard because it looks the same. And then some some uh, producer snitch ass bitch ratted on me and told everyone that told them that I use a uh, cardboard. Some snitch I can't ass that bitch. Use cardboard. Why are you? Why, why did you try to be a little snake in the grass? A little a little Lucifer. Well, I'm also not the only person who used cardboard. Um, Who's cardboard, cardboard was was Kim used cardboard. That's how she Aaron got her. Uh, that's how Kim got it, that thing to stand up on her shoulders. But that wasn't like the majority and, of her thing. It was just that little thing, right? Is is that pink thing on her head cardboard too? That's probably I, I don't know. I didn't go. I didn't go. There, I mean, there's, there's there's clearly something helping it hold structure. I don't know. I don't know what it is though. I wasn't. I didn't. I was too busy making my own garment. Yeah, I think we're her. Is because it's just like a little accent thing. But the majority of her thing, it, you can see it as paper. Also with Naomi too. Um. But, yeah. Anyway, I like. I, I like. I, that, I like. The like you had. Where'd, where'd you get that wig? Um, this wig, the wig that landed me in the bottom, um, you lent it to me. Yeah. You, and do you want to say anything? you want to say a thank you? Or do you want to say Thanks anything? for putting me in the bottom. Thanks for getting me in the bottom with your wig. Thank you. Know, you. I, th- I think it was your embracing of the materials got you in the bottom, honey. This wig was probably the only thing that saved your ass and then sends you home instead of well, there. I, you so know, you want to say thank you. You know what? I'll take it. From, you're welcome. Thanks for thanks for you're welcome. for landing me in the bottom. Let's go to Derek. So Derek, very Derek's idea was to look like the little mermaid. I don't Derek understand was, why. Because it it tied to her childhood in some way, and she felt um, like it would. She looks crazy with the eyebrows. Also, Derek Barry wanted to change her eyebrows each runway. She changed her eyebrows each time, and they just got crazier and crazier. You know, there's something to be said about her really trying. That honestly, that speaks to how Derek is willing to really like work hard and like do the thing. So. Good for her. She's like, I'm gonna. I'm, they asked me to change it up. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna try my best. She's willing. I don't know how able she is, but she's definitely willing. Uh, I was uh, a little bit uh, uncomfortable with her description of her mother look. She was like, "This is a look that my mother wore," but I'm reimagining it as a sheer nightgown, and this is the night that I was conceived. I was like, "Not Derek Perry telling the story of." This this is a lot. I was like that 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 feels like a lot. I love it. Derek is Derek is so wild. She's fucking not saying work. Not a Little Mermaid. I just uh, I guess but I, I, but I do like her. her I, I like her mom look though. I just didn't like the story of her um being conceived. I thought it was a little a little odd. And um this look so y'all odd. this book look of Derek's was such a point of controversy during this episode where we where Derek was like she would not stop going on and on about how much work she put into this garment and how she was like I honestly think this is one of the best garments that's ever been made on RuPaul's Drag Race I really genuinely think this should be put up in a museum and I I she was like I literally think it should be put up in a museum because it is so beautiful I spent so much time and so much detail 
and we were like i just and she kept being like what do you guys and we were like we we just don't see it and like another season had she like maybe covered the gloves too and also covered the panty maybe that would have been like a safe look but comparing it to like what i can't mean you cannot put that next to what kim did what naomi did and be like Ooh, girl! Like this is the best look here. Like that is that is literally just delusion. Well, you tell that to Miss Barry because she was adamant about the validity of this look. I was like, you better work, honey. Work. And it's going to Chi Chi Devane. Chi Chi who, who I mean, so who also she made looks a like big an old sack. baby. She looks like an older <laughs> baby because like the hair and like the glasses. It looks like it was like it was like it was like, like, an, like an old baby. Yeah, I think she's trying to dress up in her mom's clothes, like the big bracelets and the right. glasses. But yeah, and she's the wig. a little baby. The I yeah, I, I don't think the, this is actually a nice wig on Chichi. It is, but she's using her 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 hair. This is a very southern pattern thing. You use your hair as the base, and you do the black spray, and you put a fall on top of it, which it looks great. I mean, if you, if you have a nice hairline, bitch, do it. I mean, Girl. not I everyone used, can do that. I used to, then I stopped. Oh, did you? Work. Did, so, did, so, did, so did. some pictures. We'll, yeah. we'll post a picture. And we'll put it, y'all, y'all are seeing it right now. This picture right now is when when I used to pull her hair back. Yes. Um, uh, this is actually Chi Chi's mother's dress. This is her actual mom's dress. She just borrowed and that. took the drag race. <laughs> she better work. She better work. I'm assuming Chi Chi's mom has short hair as well. Yeah, she, she. I think it was like really, really short though, like platinum and really short. Like I Lord. think it, at the time it was like, like the picture she referenced. It was like buzzed down. Work well, yeah. I think I think her mom looks great. She's she, it's her mom's dress. So I mean, how much more of your mom can you be, right? And and day, her book good. look is fantastic. Really good, really really good. The only thing I wish is they went in, in 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 the waist a little more. But I mean, you're trying to you you made it from scratch. And I love all of the little ornaments she did in her hair. She made those bracelets, that ponytail, that 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 long braid, which I love. I think she she looks stellar. Well, I mean, it can, yeah, it can only go in so much of the waist because she's using these cheap courses that they, they have a drag you, race. Yeah. If you haven't noticed, they give us these courses. If, when we turn around, they they either don't close at all because they're too small for some of us, or they are like they are like literally side by side because it's too big. So like these yeah. courses, it, so it is just is what y'all don't realize is there is just a box of courses that and br- that courses and use. bras and also also hoop skirts they give you as well to make yeah when you have a design challenge and petticoats yeah they petti- give you all petticoats hoop skirts um brassieres corsets and cinchers um, too yeah and you can use them as bases when you have to when you have um unconventional uh challenges unconventional yeah. materials challenge you can actually use them any challenge you want they're just there there it's, it's a box of shapewear available for you to use and then since i've been on since also as well they started adding hip pads too they make like those like those uh, astro booty pads where you can just step into them they, they provide that for you too just in case and also well, i well, love chi chi's nice. lipstick chi chi's lipstick color it's like a light pink it looks i i used to wear this color it was called snob by mac i, I don't know if that's it but it was a color very similar to this i used to fucking love snob i, should, I think i still have some sticks of it it's just not Honestly, it's not again. for me the top for me the top two are actually Naomi and Chi Chi, personally. Oh uh, no, I think it's definitely Kim and Naomi because Kim's mom look for me it turns it. And um, during the during the judges' remarks, you know, there I, I I also forget how how much Ross has changed over the years. I know he really has. It's a gag to see, but the voice is still the exact same. Yeah. That's your Ross? You know, you know when you have a baked potato and you season it with pepper, salt, and you just really want it to taste good. And then you cook it, you cook it, you cook it, and then bam, it's finally ready. That's you. That's you. You're the baked potato. <laughs> um, you know that thing? Um, so we find out that the bottom two queens are me and Derricka Berica. Damn. And we lip sync to... You mighty real, baby, feel mighty real. By Sylvester, did you get some joy watching me in the bottom? Um, I wouldn't say joy, but I definitely was like, oh, that sucks. I hope Derek wins. And 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 did Derek win? Unfortunately. Um, no, when you I remember watching this in New York City when you were in the bottom, everybody was gagged. Everybody was obviously rooting for New York City. And you know, everyone knows you to be a good loose thinker, so 
I don't think, I mean, but again, it's TV, you never know what's going to happen. People are like, Bob is a good lip singer. We think Bob is going to do a good job. I mean, you did, you did a great job. But you have, uh, er, this season is this is the season of things falling apart. As soon as you start your airing stuff falling off, I'm like, these girls in season eight, did, did, bitch, they need to put fucking roll y'all in rubber cement before y'all start lip syncing. Because y'all just, all, every single lip sync of this season, y'all hoes lose shoes, hair, jewelry. It's like, what is wrong with these girls on this season? Can we just cut back to Monet's chaps One falling off? One lip sync. One lip sync, bitch. Yeah, out of yeah, yeah, exactly. Literally, me one lip. But every out of your every three thing this season, out of your three, lip, every lipstick this season, y'all hoes cannot keep anything on. I'm just saying, in your one lipstick, your wig fell off. Your fucking chaps. No, are, I took that was it was, it was a wig reveal. My chaps came down. Yo, you're okay. I'm gonna reiterate, y'all. Monet's wig reveal did not happen when she yes, wanted it to it happen. Did. Well, it was a poorly timed wig. Well, reveal. you know what? Be albeit a poorly timed reveal is what I wanted to do. Now the chaps, I try to take them off. Bob, we listen. Listen, we see you trying to deflect and uh, project your. <laughs> no, I'm saying you trying to you trying to drag you trying mishaps. to drag us because we're talking about your season and it, 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 all of y'all were just messy lip syncers falling apart. As soon as RuPaul says life melt, every single one of y'all. We were not. We were not. We have some, actually some. We have some really <laughs> iconic lip syncs from this season. Just Chi Chi. Truly iconic lip syncs. I love when they took the Chi Chi one and they 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 remixed it to Mortal Kombat and she throws the fucking side. That shit was it was a. It, I guess memes were popular that. back. What? It I was, don't think I saw that one. Oh, bitch! Is it was? Did you say memes were popular back then, bitch? Do you think we filmed this in 1999? How long ago do you think this was? How long ago do you think this was? This was seven years ago. That's a that's a long time. That's that, that's the better part of a decade. Not, I guess memes were popular back then. Bitch, what is your timeline? Bitch, y'all niggas was on Logo. Y'all ain't have shit. Y'all was bald-headed and confused, looking crazy on Logo TV. Wow. Do you have any fond memories of this lip sync? Um, I remember I wasn't very nervous. Um, I was pretty confident that I was going to be Derek Barry. Um... And I remember Derek being like, if it was a Britney song, and I was like, it's not. So, <laughs> oh, if, if, but if it's, it's not. Britney, if it's a Britney song, do you think Derek would have beat you? No. It'll work. I think I would have won this lip sync if it was a Britney song. <laughs> what song do you think it would have been that Derek would have beat you? Maybe American Pie? By who? Who was that song? How's that go? By my, 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 my Miss American Pie. Pull the Chevy to the levee, but the levee the was, dry. was dry. Them good old boys were drinking whiskey and rye, thinking this would be the day the that, day I, that I, I No, I like that song. I could win that song too. There's probably a song somewhere. Maybe, maybe I don't care by uh by that group. Icona Pop. Icona Pop. Maybe I don't care. Got it. Um, but I was not worried. I also remember. So I'm wearing these really. So my, my, the reason that I, I had these massive earrings on, because I don't normally wear big earrings like that. Like that's that's really not part of my drag. It has not really. I I went through a small stint where I was trying to make that my drag because I felt like that's what you needed to do. I really I really internalized this like this like reading of me like not being glamorous and not having big makeup and not having big earrings and jewelry. So I, I was going through this phase where like I got to wear massive massive earrings. And I did glue the earrings down, but there you can't lip sync in big earrings like that. Like it's the physics, the way physics work, uh, if you're like whipping your head around, the earrings are coming off. So the earrings flew off my ear, obviously. Um, but I was serving. I don't think this lip sync was messy at all. I think it was actually a really good lip sync. I think me and Derek actually both did a, a pretty good job. Um, and I um, I brought it home, and I and I sent my, my good friend Derek home. Derricka home rest in peace Derek Barry on his RuPaul's Drag Race career and the winner of the challenge was uh Kim, Kim Chisel and um Three and we are now remain. down to the top four the all girls of color color was this the first season of all girls of color in the finale no no it's not Bianca Adora Jinx. Um, season, season three was all girls of color. Manila Raj and Alexis Potato. Yes. Has it happened since? Season, season nine, I believe no. season one was also all girls of color. 10, BB, no. Rebecca Glasscock, and who else? Season eleven. No. Oh uh, yeah, it was. It was. Yeah, it was. It was two Puerto Rican queens and, and an African queen. Season so one. one, two, so one. Season eight. one and season three. 
Season um, one, three, and eight. There's probably more. I mean, I, I think we're just thinking of Tyra. Monroe. No, Raven is Raven is definitely oh, Raven. white. One hundred percent white. Um, and then UK had the first all white top twelve. Hey, top twelve <laughs> down under. I meant down under. <laughs> oh, with all the queens and down under white. No, they had um they, they had a a, a okay. few uh Aboriginal queens. Y'all went home in the first like two episodes and then they had two aboriginal queens on uh oh, and they one went aboriginal home in the first queen, episode one queen who was an indigenous uh kiwi say again <laughs> and they went home in the first two episodes i believe so damn no anita um, wiglet was not well anita wiglet was was uh there was it was uh jojo's a hoe and i can't remember the other queen's name well i did not watch a lot of uh down under uh um uh, well bob the drag queen four queens remain I can't wait to see what the next episode is and what makes it. Who, who do you think is going to make it to the top three? You know, I will say at this point, I thought it was going to be me, Kimchi, and Chi Chi. I did not think Nam was going to make it to the top three. Whoa. Because had a really, Naomi had a really rough ride. Y'all are forgetting, like, y'all are seeing Naomi now. Like, y'all, y'all are talking about Naomi in 2022. But back in 2015, Naomi had a very rough ride to the top three. Well, Monet, who do you think is going to win? From, but I will say like she started like her first half, but like since the, from since the I guess, what episode was that? Now I can't even remember. The scarecrow look was like two episodes ago. Oh damn! Well, so that was halfway through then. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. It makes who sense. Do, who do you think is gonna win? At this point, when you're watching, who do you think is gonna win? Um, watching, I thought it was between you and Kim. I didn't say between, bitch. I said who. I don't know. Obviously, I was rooting for you, but I'm logically, I was probably saying like, mm, I could see because Kim, because Kim had, because Kim was also doing a really good job, and Kim had, Kim, y'all had won the same amount of challenges, right? No, you had. I won three challenges. Kim had two or three. three. Oh, two. This is her. This is her second. <laughs> this is her second one. Kim had one since episode one. Wow. Yeah. Gag. So yeah, probably for you, but. Oh, yeah, I, well, definitely rooting for you. I don't know who I actually thought was gonna win. I, I was, I was like, it could be. So you agree, Derek? Win. You think I don't have the beauty and grace to win Drag Race? That Wait. really upset me at the time. I was like, this bitch just called me ugly. I was like, this bitch just called me ugly. I wanted to fight, but you knew I not fight. That. I was very hurt. <laughs> Do what? But you knew. You, you knew that already. Knew what? That's how I felt. That I didn't possess the beauty and grace to win Drag Race. Hello. I was very irritated that day. Anyway, um, well, <clears throat> there it is. Another episode of RuPaul's Drag Race Season 8. Thank you all for joining us on this journey. As you can more. see, we're almost done. Um, it's like, it's we coinciding ha- with All-Star 7, which is kind of wild. Because, okay, All-Star 7 is 9. There's episode, no, 10, 11, 12. This has episode 9, 10. Oh, we're going to finish a week early. Well, whatever. But... Um, thank you all for joining us on this journey. It's actually been very fun to reflect on RuPaul's Drag Race Season 8. Again, let us know. Um, we'll post like a Twitter poll or Instagram poll or something to see which episode you want, to, which season you want us to review next. Um, All-Stars 2. I'm, I'm, I'm making the decision. All-Stars, I, 2. All-Stars 2 is my is my favorite season. It is the really best good. season of Drag Race. It it's was really good. So Monet's, Monet's vote is All-Stars 2. I love All-Stars 2. Um, but maybe they'll want us to talk about one of your seasons. Mm, sure. Oh, maybe, you know what? Maybe we can do All Star 7 next. That'd be interesting, wouldn't it? That'd be very interesting. All right. Thank you all for joining us. Bye, everyone. Bye. <laughs>